Something that is mandatory that you have to have for your informative speech are what are called speech aids. Aids are anything that enhance your informative topic. You may use them for persuasive, but you don't have to. You can do whatever you want to do for persuasive. But speech aids often enhance things in ways that words sometimes can't. So here are the categories of speech aids. The first one is pictures. Pictures are really important because they give us a visual impression of what it is you're talking about. There are two general categories of pictures, a board, which I'll show you in a set, and technology. So the first thing we have is a board. When you have a speech aid that's a board, what you do is you just put the picture on a board and then you show it to your audience. Now here's an example of something that is not very effective. Um, this is a student who did an informative speech on DNA. And as you can see, it's drawn, it's not drawn very well, it doesn't give us much insight into the topic. Here's another one. Um, it's a little old, I've had this for probably 15 years, but it's still effective. This is a speech on smallpox. So it's one thing to talk about smallpox, but it's another thing to show an image of smallpox so people get a sense of what it is and what it looks like. Um, so when you see these images, it has a, a, an effect on people. When I show this to my class, I hear the sounds of my audience going, oh, that looks terrible. Exactly, and that's the point. This next one is what I consider to be a perfect visual aid. This visual aid was done on whitening your teeth. I think it was persuasive speech. I'm not I'm sure it was a while ago, but this is a perfect visual aid because it's large enough for everybody in the room to see, and it's, it's perfect. This is what happens when you whiten your teeth. This is what happens when you don't. It says everything that needs to say in one visual, and that's what's really important about pictures. Another category of pictures is using technology. So right here, I'm next to a projection screen. I'm not going to project anything right now. But I want you to realize is that with projection, with technology and phones and things like that, boards used to be done you know, five, ten years ago. Almost everybody had a board. Now everybody almost uses technology. The thing about technology that you have to be aware of is when you are delivering your speech, you have to incorporate the technology into your performance. Picking up a board is easy. Going over to the computer and getting it together is not. Having it project, having your picture, just imagine if I'm speaking and the entire time I'm speaking that there is a picture of smallpox next to me. That's going to distract from my speech. So you have to build the technology into your speech. Have it ready to go. What I tell my students is take their website, put a black page up on it, and then have their picture as an alternate tab. So when they get up there, they click on the computer, their picture shows, they talk about the picture, and then they click on the computer, black page comes up, and then we're done. So always be aware of that, which you should never do, and don't forget to read my packet, their whole rule, a whole list of rules, what to do with informative and persuasive in terms of visual images, um, and visual aids and things like that. Read that for all the rules, but have it prepared, have it ready to go. The next one we have is what's called video. Not what's called, uh, obviously video. A lot of people use video. Video is very easy. It's very straightforward. I've had a you know, great speech on Bob Marley, and they showed Bob Marley singing. Fantastic. The problem with video is that people make them too long. So I once had a student, a student who did a speech on Bruce Lee, and I think it was Fists of Fury. I'll watch Bruce Lee all day long. But what the student did was show eight minutes of a Bruce Lee video and then start his speech, which was six minutes long. Okay? So before he even started his speech, he was losing points on the speech. So you always have to embed the video into the appropriate parts of your presentation, but time it. It's extremely important. Another mistake a lot of people make is they'll have their speech on Bob Marley or whatever, and then at the end, they'll play a Bob Marley song. So they've done a six minute speech, and then they'll play a three minute Bob Marley song, and that's nine minutes. All video is part of your total time, so be careful with that. And the same caveats of technology, have it ready to go. You have to go find your video on YouTube while, you know, I, I'm not going to stop timing. So if it takes you two minutes to find your video, that's two minutes that's, that's taken out of your speech. So be careful of that. Next one we have what are called objects. Um, objects are just showing us something. So objects can work, but the biggest problem with objects is if, if it's too small. For example, I had a student give a speech on um, the dollar bill. There's a lot of interesting information on the dollar bill. And he showed a dollar bill to the entire class. There's no way the class is going to be able to see what's on that dollar bill. So if you want to show us something, it has to be big enough. So, so for example, there's something called plastination. Plastination 
think it's in the Science Center. I don't know if it's still there, but they had an exhibit recently. I took my kid there. It's pretty cool. There's a, a doctor, his name is Gunter von Hagen. What he does is he takes your body, dead people's bodies, and he kind of plasticates them, creates sort of a plastic substance. A student in my class was able to procure some body parts, so brought those to the class. And then she showed, I think it was a brain, a heart, and a, and a lung to everybody, and then put it away. And that's the thing about objects. You have to show it, and then you have to get rid of it, because if she had left a brain there the entire time, I know that during her speech, I would have stared at that brain and thought, who is that? You know, whose head did that brain used to be? Because I'm a full body donor. I'll donate all my organs. I don't want them, you know, after I'm dead. Um, but I, I, I would have focused on that. So again, whatever your object is, show it, and then get rid of it. The next one we have are people. People can be great. People can also be a distraction. You know, so if you bring somebody in to demonstrate something, I've had martial arts demonstrations, I've had Aztec dance demonstrations. Um, still one of the best speeches I've ever seen was a student who did her speech on, uh, what she called, her, her language, not mine, she called, um, she did a speech on gangbangers. And she brought in her boyfriend that she called a gangbanger. And he came in and during her entire speech, he just stood there like this. And he had on dark sunglasses and baggy pants, and she just talked about it. It was the class was they were dying. I mean, it was one of the funniest things I think some of them have ever seen. And she would just point to him and she would say, you know, notice the baggy pants. <laughs> we'll just go into this whole speech about him. And then after the speech, he just walked away. He never said a word to the class. It was amazing. I've had um, demonstrations on how to do a massage. In one class, I had a student, and during the middle of the student speech, a student jumped up. And started singing, start making all these sounds, and the student whose speech was on the Heimlich maneuver said, oh, he's choking, and ran over there and did the Heimlich maneuver on him. So people are great, but the caveat to people is you have to make sure those people aren't a distraction, uh, but also that um, they know. You know, I've had people in class try to get other people to volunteer for their speeches, and you have to be careful of that because, you know, if you want to get up here and say, hey, I'm going to do a speech on kissing, who's in? You're not likely to get people just to jump up. So make sure you manage your people appropriately. Next we have demonstrations. So this is how to do something. And this is also an extra credit opportunity, so be aware of that. So look for that extra credit speech on how to do a demonstration. The only thing about demonstrations, and this is great for informative, is that we have to be able to see all the pieces of the demonstration. So if you get up here on how to use something, so the massage which incorporated a person was also a demonstration. It was very well done because the person speaking brought in uh, somebody that, that reg he regularly does massage with, she laid down on a table and he explained various massage techniques as you know during the during the speech. And it was fantastic. It was well done. We could see it. Another class I had a student who did a demonstration on how to make origami. So she'd get up there and have these little tiny pieces of paper and explain it. And at the end, she's like, "This is a crane," but I, you know I, I couldn't even see the crane, let alone how she developed the crane. So demonstrations have to be on a scale that everybody in the room can see it. Next, you have PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint is huge. Every conference, every meeting, everywhere I go has PowerPoint. I generally don't allow students to do PowerPoint in my class. If you're desperate to do PowerPoint, that's fine, because I think PowerPoint is a skill. But in public speaking, PowerPoint can be more of a distraction than a skill. So for example, let's say you're doing an informative speech on cheese. And you say, today I'm going to talk to you about cheese. And you click on your first slide, it just says, cheese. Or the worst is a lot of people, they'll just have a bunch of words on PowerPoint, and then they'll read the words. So I've had people literally turn to their PowerPoint and start talking to it and read to us, not even look at their audience. Another, part, another problem with PowerPoint is that we become so focused on the PowerPoint that we lose the speaker. So it's all about this technology, this presentation, and not you speaking. This is a public speaking class, not a PowerPoint presentation class. So be careful of that. If you think you can manage it well, so I've had students that have, have had like multiple visual aids for a speech. They have four or five pictures they want to show at different points during their speech, and maybe a video, and they create a PowerPoint presentation where they're speaking, and then they click on a video or a picture, and they talk about it, and they click on it, it's a blank, a black slide, and then they stick, communicate, and they go back to it. That's much more effective than having something going during your entire speech. Last, we have audio. Um, audio can be great as well. You know, I've had here you hear a speech on the Beatles. Listen to them. I had a student who did a speech on um, sound pollution, and then played you know different decibels of different things that we hear on a regular basis and how much that hurts our ears. So audio can be great, but the caveat to audio is make sure it works. I've had a number of people say I'm going to use my phone, and then they can't get it, or they're going to use their phone, and then we can't hear it. So make sure that everybody can hear. It. Okay. 
So again, uh, these are the types. That, I'm sure there are other different ways. If you're creative and you want to come up with something, that's fantastic. I love it. But make sure it enhances your speech. It doesn't distract from your speech. And read all the rules in my packet for public speaking.